Friday, February 8th, we're back here in the Bay Area, actually at uh, Casino Matrix in San Jose. So I'm gonna put back a session on the tables and we'll see if we can run it up. So got on the table about 8 o'clock, uh, it's just a bit past 10 right now, so I've been on the table for about two and a half hours or so. So a few interesting hands to share up to this point. I uh, definitely want to preface it by saying that I'm not playing particularly well. So uh, first interesting hand comes when Under the Gun raises uh, to $20. I have Jack-7 to Diamonds in late position and I make a call. A little bit of a loose call here. Flop comes ace jack seven with two spades, so we flop bottom two pair on this board. Player continuation bets for thirty dollars. I make the call. Uh, start this hand with about three eighty, so about three thirty left in the stack at this point. Turn comes to three diamonds, which is a good card. Uh, the flush doesn't get there, and our hand is still relatively disguised. Uh, player continues for sixty dollars here, and I think it through a little bit, a little bit of an awkward stack size to just put in a raise here. Uh, if I were to put in a standard wage raise, it doesn't leave too much on the river to jam. So I go ahead and just jam all in here for $330. He tanks a bit. Uh, he shows ace of hearts, queen of clubs as he's tanking, and he ultimately decides on a call. Uh, river runs out to be a nine of clubs that we hold here. Our next interesting hand comes when I have about 750 effective here. Uh, a couple of limps. I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks, and I raise it to $35. Only the hijack makes the call. Uh, we go heads up to a flop of ace, jack, eight, two spades. So a flop middle set here, and continuation bet for $40. Player doesn't think too long makes the call. Turn comes the Queen of Clubs, a uh, bit of an interesting card because it does complete 9-10 and King-10 here. And given that the board is pretty much all broadways with the exception of the 8, uh, it should hit my range more often than his limp calling range. And so the fact that I have two jacks here and I don't block an ace or queen, I also can't really put them on two pair. Uh, so that being said, I check it. Go ahead and bets $105. And I make the call. Uh, River comes to four diamonds. Uh, at this point, given the line that I've taken, I'm a little bit lost in the hand. Uh, probably overthinking it a little bit uh, in terms of what he can have. I decided to check again on the river, and he puts out a bet of $130. I make the pretty quick hits to call, and he turns over pocket eights. So he fought bottom set. Uh, probably could have piled chips in, obviously, set over set in this spot, but. Uh, this is definitely an indication of maybe not playing the best. So the hand immediately after this, the under the gun raises $15, middle position player calls $15, and I'm on the button with pocket aces. Uh, put in a three bet here to $70, the under the gun player makes the call, and the middle position has about $90, and he just jams all in. Make the additional $20 call, as does under the gun. Flop's an interesting one. Flop is ace, nine, seven, all diamonds. So we flop top set here on a monotone board. The player checks it. I put a bet of $125. He makes the call. He's got about $780 left. Uh, the turn comes a four of spades. He checks it once more, and I put another value bet of $250. He plays with his chips a little bit, thinks it through, and ultimately goes all in for the $780. I don't think too long. I don't feel good, obviously, um, but given the strength of our hand, I just make the call. Uh, the river comes a king of spades and the under the gun player turns over jack ten of diamonds so he flops a flush to our flop set and uh, we go ahead and lose a pretty big pot here and so yeah definitely a little bit of run bad here definitely some play bad for sure uh, currently stuck in the neighborhood of around eight hundred dollars uh, did a table change hope to kind of refresh the mindset and see if we can play a little bit better poker uh, gonna go and hop back onto the table see if we can turn it around from a playing perspective obviously we can't control what cards come out but 
Uh, if I continue to play what I consider rather poorly, then I'm probably going to pick up early and just call it a day, but we'll see how things go over the next little bit here. It's uh, Sunday, February 10th, doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to be heading up to Thunder Valley to put in some cash game action. As you can see from the footage, we're actually taking the bus today. Uh, it's a bit of a drive from San Francisco. It's about two and a half hours one way. So I'm uh, going to just do a day trip there, and I didn't want to expend all my energy driving. So I'm just going to hop on a bus. It's a $10 round trip, pretty pretty decent value. I think you get a, like $20 of free play too. I'm going to head up there with a couple buddies. Uh, but before we transition to that session, I do have two more hands to recap from Casino Matrix from two nights ago. Our first hand comes in a straddle pot. Uh, I start the hand with about 570 in my stack. I'm under the gun with pocket aces and I put in a raise to $35. The big blind makes the call and the straddler uh, puts in a three bet to $135. He's got about eight or 900 in his stack so he covers me. He's been playing uh, fairly loose and making some pretty light call downs up to this point but he's also a very capable player. That being said, if you look at it from a GTO perspective, uh, he's three betting from the straddle position against my under the gun raise which in theory should look pretty strong. Uh, so given that uh, information, just jam all in for 570 effective. Uh, the big blind makes the fold and the straddler calls. Uh, the board runs out in jack, eight, four, three, and then queen on the river. So we go ahead and get this nice double up to about uh, $1,200. So the next interesting hand comes when I open it up to $20 from the hijack and the cutoff makes the call. Uh, I have four six of spades in this hand, a little bit of a loose play, but I'll mix these in my late position uh, open uh, ranges uh, at times. And the flop comes deuce 3-3 three, three with two clubs, so we're going to flop uh, a gut shot here. Uh, I make continuation bet for $40, and the cutoff makes the call. The cutoff has about 400 left heading into the turn, uh, which brings a 9 of hearts. And again, I continue to try to rep here. I put in a bet of $120, and he tanks for quite a while, and he ultimately makes the call. Uh, up to this point, given his tank, um, it feels like he definitely has an overpair, uh, or perhaps a hand like even eights or sevens and is a non-believer. And so I'm planning to proceed accordingly, uh, depending on the river, which comes a seven of spades. Uh, he's got about 280 left, as I mentioned, and I go for all three streets and I jam it all in. Uh, he thinks for a few seconds and he decides on a call. So he rakes the pot. He was a pretty nice guy, though. I chatted with him a little bit. He said he did have an overpair. Asked if he had tens. He said a, big, a bit bigger, uh, and he told me that he had queens. So uh, lose this one. Try to run a three street uh, bluff, uh, unsuccessful. But um, I don't hate the play. Just can, the fact that I rep the whole time uh, an overpair and just try to go for all three streets. I would have played aces, kings or queens the same way so I like that from a perspective of balance so we we're in the game for two thousand dollars I cash out for one thousand ten a loss of nine hundred ninety dollars uh, it's probably that one aces hand that really crippled us in the middle of the session and wasn't able to recover then um, started to play a little bit better after that but uh, not enough to get us out of the hole so uh, book a loss there and we're gonna go head up to Thunder Valley as I mentioned now to see if we can uh, run it up today
it's a Tuesday the 12th here in Oakland, California at a restaurant called True Burger. I uh, wanted to do the hand recaps uh, at Thunder Valley two nights ago, but the, it was time for the bus to take off and uh, I was actually going to film the hands on the bus, but then they shut off all the lights, so uh, kind of hard to do hand recaps in the dark. And given that we didn't, uh, I don't think we went to any restaurants in a couple of the previous vlogs, so I figured why not do uh, the hand recaps at a nicer location, better background. All right, so diving into the hands. Uh, first interesting hand happens uh, when I'm under the gun. I open it up to $20 with seven eight of clubs. I think it's okay to uh, insert these types of hands into your opening range at times uh, to balance uh, other premium type hands. The middle position cutoff and button make the call, so we go four ways to a flop. Uh, so a pretty good flop here. We get ace, queen, 10, all clubs, so flop a flush. Uh, make a continuation bet of $50 and only the middle position player calls. Uh, he's got about another 175 back, and the turn brings a deuce of hearts. Uh, I go all in, and he doesn't think too long, and he makes the call. The river comes, a king of spades, uh, and I turn my hand over, and he actually turns over king of clubs and jack of spades. So he flopped Broadway uh, with a royal redraw, but our hand holds. Our next interesting hand, couple of limps from early position. I've got four six of hearts in middle position. I decide to over limp with this hand. I do this on occasion, definitely don't always recommend it, but uh, given that the game was playing fairly passive, um, I think it's okay to find yourself uh, limping with these kinds of hands at times. Uh, it's a six way limp pot. We go to a flop of jack five deuce with two clubs. Checks the late position who bets five dollars. Uh, big blind, under the gun, and I make the call. Turns a pretty good card, turns the gin card. It's uh, three of spades. And the big blind this time leads for $35. Bump it up to $110. The late position thinks it through for a little bit and he makes the call and he gets back to Big Blind who actually just jams all in for $400. I make the call and the late position player calls as well for about $350. Uh, we get a clean river which comes in eight of diamonds. I turn my hand over. Big Blind also turns over 4-6, four, 4-6 six, four, six off suit. And the late position player who had originally bet $5 on the flop turns over pocket fives for the flop set. So I can chop up that money and uh, take this one down halfway. Next interesting hand, uh, under the gun opens for a rather large size. He opens it for $30. I call it pocket sevens in middle position and the cutoff calls as well. We go three ways to a flop, to a pretty good flop. Uh, four, seven, eight, two spades. So we flop middle set here. Uh, the under the gun player checks and I bet $50. Uh, cut off folds and the under the gun player calls. His turn comes a deuce of hearts, a good blank card. Uh, he's got about $500 left and uh, I'm putting him on a hand like aces, kings, queens here and so I want to go and try to get some value from those hands uh, and in case he does have a hand like ace, queen or ace, king of spades, I do want to charge some plus draws here. So I bet uh, $170, I size up a bit. He tanks for quite a while and actually makes the call. Uh, the river comes a deuce of clubs. Uh, so pairs the board, we fill up, uh, he checks once more, and I go all in, and he makes the instant fold, and he actually announces that he did indeed have a flush draw. Okay, so last interesting hand to report, we're eight-handed here, um, I'm under the gun with king-queen offsuit, uh, king of spades, queen of clubs, and I go ahead and bump it up to $20, a little bit of a loose open, I think, generally speaking, uh, but as I mentioned, the lineup was playing fairly passive, so I feel like opening with his hand was perfectly reasonable. The button and big blind call, so we go three ways to a flop of queen of spades, jack of clubs, nine of spades. Uh, the big blind leads this time for $45. I raise it to $125 and the button folds and the big blind goes all in for a 305 total. Uh, make the call. The turn comes a five of hearts and the river comes a four of spades. Uh, he turns his hand over, he's got king of clubs, ten of spades, so he flops the straight. Uh, definitely a hand in his range, you can also have 8-10, but given that there are so many other hands I think he could have that we're ahead of, um, I don't hate my play. Granted, maybe overplayed it a little bit, but and definitely not the result that I was looking for, but I think it's okay in this spot given that he wasn't too deep either. So, so that wraps it up for the session at Thunder Valley. We were in the game for $600, we cashed out exactly $1,150, book a profit of $550. Uh, pretty nice win considering how poorly we played on Friday night uh, at Casino Matrix. And didn't play that much better, I'd say, uh, at Thunder Valley on Sunday, but definitely ran quite a bit better. So it's nice to book a win following a uh, less than stellar performance uh, in San Jose. So yeah, and closing things up for this vlog, um, if you've never been to True Burger before, they make a really awesome burger here. Uh, it's owned by two guys that are Bay Area uh, locals that are that are chefs. 
Um, they started this business, I think, in like 2010. They actually have another location on uh, Grand Avenue. We're currently at the Broadway Avenue location. Um, if any of you are familiar with the Super Duper brand of burgers, it's a fairly popular chain. Uh, this is definitely that kind of a burger, but better. So you can mark my words on that, take that to the bank. Uh, so if you ever want to visit, or if you do visit uh, Oakland, definitely come by if you're a burger fan. Uh, and check out this restaurant. So I close things off for this vlog and uh, as always thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next one. Dude, this guy the saddest way to eat a meal. There's no lights in this bus. And so I'm just eating it this way. My friend Dennis is trying to light. This, this, is how, this is how he always eats. After after a, a session. This is how he winds down. <laughs>